This module takes up some of the two most familiar schools of thought from international relations theory, and examines their contribution to the study of international organizations. These are political realism, and liberalism. Each of these theories is contested and none of them, is entirely self-contained. Therefore, defining them, and drawing boundaries around them, is sometimes a challenging endeavor. Political Realism Looking back, over the development of the field of international politics, there is little doubt that the realist tradition has exercised an enormous influence. Even, its harshest critics, would acknowledge that realist theories, with their focus on power, fear and anarchy, have provided important explanations for conflict and war. Even when disputed, these accounts have often set scholars' baseline expectations. According to political realism, because the desire for more power is rooted in the flawed nature of human beings, states and individuals, are continuously engaged in a struggle to increase their capabilities. The absence of the international equivalent of a state's government is a permissive condition that gives human appetites free reign. In other words, political realism explains continuing conflict, and the weakness of international cooperation, by human failings. Wars are explained, for example, by particular aggressive statesmen or by domestic political systems, that give greedy groups and leaders, the opportunity to pursue expansionist foreign policies. For realists, international politics can be characterized as evil. As one scholar put it, bad things happen because the people making foreign policy are sometimes bad. Realism suggests that states always search for security in an anarchic international system. The main threat to their well-being comes from other states. At this point, a distinctive perspective to international relations emerges. It suggests that international politics should be understood in terms of the pursuit of military dominance by states, in an effort to reduce their intrinsic sense of insecurity in relation to other countries. It is from this view of power, that we can derive the central realist prediction. Which is great powers will develop, and mobilize military capabilities to constrain the most powerful among them. Now, let's look at a rival theory, known as liberalism. The liberal tradition, in thinking about security, war, and cooperation, dates as far back as the philosopher Immanuel Kant, who emphasized the importance of republican constitutions in producing peace. His pamphlet, Perpetual Peace, contains a peace plan and may fairly be called the first liberal tract on the subject. Liberalism suggests, that international organizations can be seen as a series of agreements which states enter into expecting to receive again. The focus of scholars, is therefore, on what kinds of international coordination, might produce these mutual benefits for their members. And what unintended consequences might follow from the arrangements that they make. These questions, lead many scholars in the liberal tradition to see international organizations as a form of a contract. In other words, as bargains made among self-interested states. It is characteristic of the liberal approach, to see international organizations in terms of the costs and benefits, that they offer various actors. Also, liberalism often stresses the concept of interdependence. For example, Liberals believe that many economic exchanges link societies together, and thus, the overall economic fates of countries are similarly connected. For example, a housing market crisis in the United States could affect economies throughout the world, as happened in 2008 and 2009. Economic insecurity, in Greece could threaten to weaken the European currency market, and to crash markets beyond Europe, as occurred in the early years of the Obama administration. Likewise, environmental disasters, and civil wars in one region, can set in motion human migration, and refugee population movements affecting countless other countries, as we could see in Afghanistan in 2021 when the Taliban entered the city of Kabul. Health epidemics, such as COVID-19, in one region can soon become global in scope. Therefore, According to liberalism, 
it is only rational, for governments to relate to one another, in a cooperative manner. That stresses shared interests in problem prevention or mitigation. Liberalism, also tends to stress the importance of human security. As an element of government security. If governments, pursue the ethical principle of peaceful cooperation, in the international arena, liberalism argues, this better allows those same governments, to invest more fully in human security programs, rather than military programs, within their own territories. In short, pursuing and maintaining peace, allows governments to spend less on the military, and more on programs to improve the quality of life. As you can see, liberalism proposes that, security issues involve, not just security against attacks from a foreign country. But also, security against illiteracy, premature death, or poverty. Liberalism, emphasizes the importance of international organizations, in facilitating peaceful cooperation among governments. By participating in international organizations, such as the United Nations, or the European Union, governments can formulate rules for mutually beneficial peaceful interaction. Although, organizations such as the United Nations, cannot guarantee peace, they can improve the odds of obtaining it, liberals believe. Such organizations, can promote increased communication between governments, international peacekeeping deployments, and international aid programs, all of which, have the potential to reduce the chances of international conflict. Those liberals, who focus on the concepts of economic interdependence of states, and the importance of international organizations, are often referred to as liberal institutionalism. Liberal institutionalism, contrasts in several critical areas with realism. Both, agree that powerful states, influence the formation, and shape of international institutions, but for different reasons. According to liberals, states create institutions to maximize shared interests. For realists, however, it is to realize and maintain domination. According to a leading American realist, quote unquote the most powerful states in the system, create and shape institutions, so that they can maintain their share of world power, or even increase it. Realism, also focuses on the extent, to which powerful states, dominate institutions. They argue that latecomers, or less powerful members, will have less control over institutional decisions and outcomes, benefit less from their creation, and will have less commitment to maintaining the institution. Realists, maintain that institutions are, basically a reflection of the distribution of power in the world. They are based, on the self-interested calculations of the great powers. Liberal institutionalists argue, on the contrary, that the shadow of the future, or the possibility to attain gains in the future, provides a strong incentive for all states to cooperate, and create institutions that benefit all parties.